Hello everyone, welcome to season three of the live streams. I know we're starting a little bit early, but I just had a few announcements to give first. How is everyone doing? I've just been reading the chat while waiting for it to start. Oh yes, now it works, okay. Hey Himang, you missed the, uh, I, I played your request, the entertainer, your favorite song. You just missed it. Okay, yes, the night bot, bot is working. Hello and welcome back everyone. Let's see, currently 81 of you, welcome. William Kelly, will Purple Beck make an appearance? I wish, I, I think they just did their own live stream actually um, an hour ago on their YouTube channel. I hope that they can, uh, I hope that they can be successful. I hope that they can make it. Uh, I liked them, they were nice. Yes, Kevin Fu, hello. Hello, everyone. We'll get started just in a moment. Um, this is the first episode of season three. So before we were in seasons one and two of the live streams, we did season one until last December and took a break. And season two was until, was from January until I believe the end of March. And um, now we're going into season three, which is going to go again, I think until sometime in December. So this is a very long season. And this is the first episode of season three. There are some changes in season three. I'm not sure if you noticed them already, but we are now streaming in full HD. It, it doesn't really matter, but I wanted to do it. So now we have slightly higher quality streaming. Uh, should be a little bit better quality video, which should hopefully make it easier to read the board, uh, easier to follow along. If you're watching it on a TV, it shouldn't look as bad. And um, a few other changes is that now for lessons, um, normally my lessons would go about two hours, two and a half hours. But for this season, I'd like for them to be 90 minutes to maximum of 120 minutes. So that means an hour and a half to about two hours, but I'd like to keep them under two hours for season three. The reason being, not because I don't want to do a longer stream, but because I want the streams to be easier to watch for you guys when you finish. Um, I don't want it to be such a huge time commitment to be able to follow these live streams. And then if you miss them to have to watch them later, you know, you might see a two and a half hour long video and think, oh, it's too long. I don't want to do that. So I want to make them an hour and a half if possible to two hours maximum for longer lessons. Will KeyCat be in the video? Uh, KeyCat does not help me teach. Um, she is in the closet though. Um, other, other changes for season three is that the lessons will now be in a little bit different of an order. So I don't mean what lessons I teach, but within the lessons, the content of each lesson will be organized going from beginner to intermediate, or if it's an intermediate topic, intermediate to advanced. So if you're watching the lesson and you feel like, oh, this is too easy, that means that this is that's the earlier part of the lesson. So if you wait, it'll get a little bit more difficult. That way, people who are intermediate can know when, there's, when they should pay more attention. So beginners should know, okay, the beginning of the video is gonna be easier for me and intermediates can know, okay, the end of the video is where it's gonna get, it's gonna get juicy, it's gonna get good for me. So things are gonna be organized. So you'll first get the most basic concepts followed by progressively more difficult concepts. So that will be either intermediate or if it's an intermediate lesson already, that will be advanced material. Should be easier to follow along for these lessons. Uh, we're still gonna be doing voting for every single topic. So not too much else has changed, just that I want season three to be a little bit more organized for you guys, easier to watch, and overall better content. So I'm just gonna check the chat for a moment, and then we'll get started with the lesson. Easy for editing? Um, Zilly, not necessarily. Editing is about a four hour process, regardless of the video. Uh, it takes about four hours for me to edit each one, which is actually very fast, I think, because they're two hour long lessons. Yes, I put her in the closet. <laughs> Kalami, this is the first time I'm actually here on live. Oh, nice, welcome. Yes, uh, we took a long break while I was in Korea. I was in Korea from April until just toward the end of last month, till the end of June almost. So April, May, June, almost three months in Korea. And during that time, I wasn't obviously able to do any live streams. And since when I got back, I had to set up again for doing live streams. So 
this should be interesting. We get to go for a brand new season. Another big announcement that I have to make. So everyone probably already knows Talk To Me In Korean, TTMIK for short. I have been working with Talk To, Re Talk to, Me, Talk to Me In Korean for over a year on a single project. Now, last year we released a 50 video series called uh, Common Korean Mistakes. And after we did that, we thought, you know what? There's actually a lot more than 50. And I think if we organize these, we can make something even better. So after we finished the video series, we immediately started working on a book. So this book is 100 of the most common Korean mistakes organized. So it's organized in every way by the lesson, you know, more beginner to intermediate, as well as within the lessons, it's organized so that you can quickly find the mistake and fix it. And if you want more information about that, continue reading. So it's really cool. We've been working on it for a long time and it's a new book. It's going to be coming out. It's a collaboration between me and Talk To Me In Korean. I'd say you're gonna get something brand new. So if you already had the 50 episode series, that's good. Those are videos. Those are a little bit different. This has a lot of different content than what's in those 50 episodes. It's not just 50 plus 50 more. It's pretty much redoing everything into a more organized format. So it's going to be coming out very soon as in like in two days. So it's, it's going to be releasing within like I'd say two days, three days maximum. So you should expect to be able to get this from Talk To Me In Korean's website. I don't know the exact price, but I believe that through Talk To Me In Korean's website, it's gonna be $21, if I heard correctly. It'll also be available from Amazon as well, but I'm not sure the price for that yet. So yeah, check it out. I'll post about it more when it officially comes out in a couple days. And I'm really excited to show this off because uh, I've been keeping it a secret for a full year that I've been working on this book and I'm really looking forward to it. Let me check the chat for a moment. Yeah, he was in Korea and I was running his whole channel. Oh yes, Aemon, that's right. Oh, Ocean Discovery, 안녕하세요. Looking forward to your new t your talk to me Korean. Yes, I am too. Billy, are you rich yet? No, I wish. He's in the States, uh, let's see. Yeah, it should be really cool. Okay, so for today's lesson, I'll just go ahead and get started. The prerequisites for today's lesson are, you need to know how to use the myeon form. And I did a live stream about this. Um, there's not yet an abridged version, but we talked about how to use myeon to mean both if and when. Most of the time when we're using it today, it's going to be used to mean if. So if you know how to use and how to conjugate this myeon form, you are good for today's lesson. If you do not, I'm not going to be reviewing it today because it actually, there are some conjugation steps for conjugating with myeon. For example, if you have chupta to be cold, it becomes, it doesn't become chu myeon, it becomes chu u myeon. So there's some conjugation tricks like that you have to learn. But go ahead and watch my previous lessons on how to use myeon or look it, look it up from any, any source you have before today's lesson because you definitely need to know how to use this confidently before you can learn how to say should and should not which is today's lesson. We're going to be learning about how to say should and should not. The main point I think I should make clear in Korean is that in English, you should do something. You should go. You know, we, we all know what that means and how it feels to hear the word should or should not. Like, oh, you should, you should go quickly. You're running out of time. Oh, I think you should. It would be a good opportunity, right? We all know how it feels when we say it and hear it. But in Korean, they have no concept of should. So this is the first thing I want to make clear, kind of like forget everything you have learned, you know, the movie cliche. There is no should and should not in Korean. It doesn't work that way. It, the way you can translate the expressions, you should do this, you should not. But in literal Korean, there is no such thing as a should or should not grammar construction. Should or should not, does not exist in Korean. Just kind of let that, let this idea sit in your mind. If this is the first time you're looking about learning about should and should not, just kind of 
think about this concept for a bit. There is no such thing as should or should not in Korean. So what that means is if we're going to say should and should not, we're going to need something else. We're going to have to do something else to say it, right? Since there is no such thing as you can't just say, oh, you should do it. You shouldn't do it. There's no simple form you can attach to make a translation. In fact, even if it was complicated, there is no, there is no single complicated form you can use just to say should and should not in Korean. The whole concept does not exist. We have to do a different way of speaking in Korean to say you should do something or you shouldn't do something. And the way you do it will depend on what you want to say exactly. So we're going to talk about that. Oh, the other thing I wanted to say is that in Korean, and we'll learn about this as well. If you say should and should not, these forms that we're going to learn can also be used as kind of like commands. Now, in a previous lesson, we learned about how you can give commands in Korean. And uh, I think I talked about how giving someone a command in Korean can sometimes sound rude. Like if you tell someone in Korean, do that or do not do that, it can be rude if you don't have a close relationship with that person. If you're talking to your friend, hey, don't go. Yeah, 가지 마. Uh, 하지 마. Like don't do it. Don't go. You know, or 그냥 해. Just do it. You can say those types of things to your friend, but you can't say those things to strangers or someone who's in a higher social position than you, like your boss or your teacher. You can't tell your teacher, come with us, teacher, eat lunch with us. 같이 가자, 같이 먹으러 가자. You can't say those things to your teacher, even if you, even if you add politeness levels to them, because the concepts of giving someone a command is not something you can do to someone who's older than you or in a different position. You have to only do it with friends. The same thing goes with these. Well, should and should not are not directly telling anyone to do anything, but these can be used as soft versions of commands. So you can tell someone, oh, I think you should do that, or oh, I think you shouldn't go there. And it can sound, it sounds very indirect, but to the Korean person, it can sound like a kind of polite, indirect way of giving a command, right? Like, oh, 먹지 마요. Don't eat it is a direct command. 먹지 마세요. 먹지 마세요. But if you were to use this with should, it can sound more like uh, you shouldn't eat that. I don't think you should eat that. And it's now no longer a command, but to them, it works effectively just like you had given them a command. So these forms are actually, they have a dual purpose. They're useful not just for saying, I think you should, it would be good if you did something, but also for saying you should you like do it or, oh, don't do it in that sense. So it has more than one use. The first form we're going to be using though is, and I debated this, which one I should teach first. I think this is the most useful one. This is not a super beginner form. I'll admit this is more of a low intermediate, maybe high beginner form. So I kind of lied to you when I said I'm doing this in order from beginning to intermediate. The reason though is this is so common. This is so useful that I think even though it's not normally taught at the beginner level, beginners should go ahead and learn this form. Now, in order to use this form, you'll need to first know how to change an action verb into an adjective. And that's easier than it sounds if you haven't followed my previous lessons. You simply take an action verb stem, so let's do kada to go, and you remove the ta, and you attach nun. Now, there are some exceptions, and I've gone over those in a previous lesson, such as if the, um, if the verb ends, so you take, you get rid of the da, if the verb stem ends in a lir, this letter here, you remove it. So instead of nol nun, you just get no nun. Um, and there, there are some other exceptions like that, but let's just keep things simple. You take an action verb stem and you attach nun. Then we're going to attach ka shi. Now, if you've been following my previous lessons, this form might look familiar to you. In fact, it's the exact same form as the nominalization form. that you might have seen before. I've done a live stream all about nominalization before, but it's this specific nominalization form we're going to be using today. You get an action verb stem, you attach nun, koshi. Literally now you have the meaning of the act of doing this verb. So kada, to go, kanen goshi, the act of going. So that's what we have first. Now you use a 
verb, which is actually a descriptive verb, nata, nata, which you will conjugate, and we'll talk about that in a second. Okay, so let's look at this again before we go over what it actually means. We take an action verb stem, we attach nun gosi, so we literally get the act of doing this verb. So the act of eating, the act of seeing. Now we have nata. Nata literally means to be preferable. To be preferable, as in to be better or best, to be something like that's the best option. So nata means that's that's that would be better. That's more preferable. I would prefer that. That's best in that sense. Or, you know, just that's the most goodest. That's the best option. So it's used when you're giving an option between multiple things. It's not just a regular word. You say like, oh, I would prefer if you go. It's not that word. It's not an action verb. It's simply a descriptive verb that means something is preferable. Like that would be preferable. That would be best. I think that would be best. That's what this verb means. So we literally get the meaning of the act of doing something would be preferable. It would be preferable if you did this is what it literally means. Though notice this form does not have the if the myun form that I talked about. So this is actually more of a low intermediate form, but I think it is super useful that if you are able to do this as a beginner, do it. It is super useful. And we're going to talk about how we can use it. Let me just look at the chat for a second. What if you're asking an older person to get you some water? Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. We can talk about that too a little bit later. Remind me, I can go back to that question, but I don't want to get too off track. Okay, so, uh, as I said, literally means to be preferable. So then let's look at an example. Okay. So, okay, yeah, really simple example. We're just going to do this. Kugo, that thing, poda. We learned how to use poda in a previous, and I think it was actually a previous lesson. Yeah, there's, there should be a live stream about this. Kugo poda, igoshi. Uh, so, first of all, this is just an example of how to use natta because I want to make sure you understand what this word really means and how it's used. Kugopoda, so more than that, igoshi naokoya. If you've never seen this poda construction, you can, you can look at this sentence without this whole part. If you've never seen the poda construction, just ignore this part for right now so you can at least understand natta. Now, natta conjugates as Na, when it's used together with the future tense. So normally we not like that, but when it's used with the future tense, you just get na, uh, na, uh. Now this is an interesting conjugation in this form. So you'll see na, uh. But anyway, this is just future tense of natta. It never conjugates as na sa yo or na sirko yo or anything like that. In fact, this is a feature of verb stems that end with this shio character here. So, literally, it will be preferable. This will be preferable. Or, more naturally, oh, I prefer this, right? So, this is just an example of how the word is used. Um, let's look at one more conjugation. Instead of igoshi, this will be, or this would be, preferable. You can also just use the yo form. So, the yo form of natta is actually na a. Na a yo. So, it doesn't become na sa yo. I've seen some people write na sa yo thinking that. No, it's just na ayo. Any conjugation you do to this, it removes this letter. So anyway, um, na ayo, remember that. Okay, that's just a general example of how to use this verb. But now let's go on to a example of this should form. So I said this means should, right? So let's do kada. So we have to go. And I want to say you should go. Now, I'm not telling someone like, hey, you should go. Get out of here, punk. You should go. I'm just going to say, oh, you should go. It would be good. It would be preferable. It would be the best if you go. You should go. Like that. So we have kada, to go. Now we get the verb stem, ka, and attach nun, koshi. Ka nun goshi, literally the act of going. Nayo. So that's, that's it. That long form with action verb stem, nun, koshi, natta, 
this is this is what it comes down to in an actual sentence. Kanen goshi dayo. Um, if you're more advanced than this sentence and you know koshi becomes k, go ahead and use that if you'd like. If you don't know what this is, ignore it. Kanen goshi dayo. It you should go. Literally though, let's look at this. Kanen goshi, the act of going is preferable. It is preferable to go. It would be better. It would be best. If you go, or I go, we don't know who it is, just the act of going is preferable. I think it would be best to go. For example, what if your friend's like, oh, I don't know if I should go to my class, you know, I missed three classes already, maybe I'm going to fail, maybe I should just miss them all. And you look at your friend, you're like, Anya, it's still, it's preferable that you go. Does that kind of make sense? So literally, you're not saying should. There is no should here. There's no like should ka, should kayo or something. Any like, There's no like adverb you can stick on. Instead, what you're literally saying is it would be preferable. Doing something would be preferable. You're not even saying if. You're just saying doing something is preferable. So yes, not going is preferable. Going is preferable. Which actually leads to the very next example, should not. So should not. So how would we use this form to say should not? Now I could tell you, but I want to check the chat for a second and see if uh, you can guess how we would use this form to say should not. So we have going is preferable. What do you think would be should not? While I drink some caffeine here. Mm, mango. Oh, yep. Michael Jason got it first. As followed by Amanda Mack. All right, yes. Okay, okay. So yes, if you want to say it's, you shouldn't go, well, literally you want to say it's not preferable, but in Korean what they do is typically in Korean, this is, this is kind of an intermediate note. So this isn't a beginner note. But in Korean, they typically do not negate the last verb in any grammar form. This includes this grammar form. It includes like, I do not think. In Korean, instead of saying it is not, I do not think, most of the time in grammar forms, they, simp they negate everything that comes before that. So this is end of the intermediate note. Let's go back to the lesson. In Korean, if you want to say it's, you should not go, what they do is they make this verb, the action verb, Negative. So in this case, you can just say an, or you know, kaji anen if you want to use the ji an ta form. But just an kanen goshi dayo, an kanen goshi dayo. Not going is preferable. So notice how this form. Just just think about it a little bit more. How this form is what you're saying is literally, it is preferred not doing something. So or it is preferred doing something. So that's how. This form and all of the should and should not forms we're going to be using today work. Okay. Um, let's see. How are we on time? Perfect. Okay. Oh yeah. Let's do. Let's do one more. that person. Tell me what this means. Tell me what you think this means. I'm going to look at the chat for a second. I can't even pronounce <laughs> Yes. Well, at some point, I was that same way. So yeah, it just takes practice. Everyone starts somewhere. Memes. Is this only medium? No, it's actually beginner to intermediate level. There is no advanced in this lesson. There is maybe high beginner for the ending part. Yeah, you guys got it. Okay. Yes, literally, literally this means it is preferable not trusting that person. And if of course, if of course we had removed this on, then it just means it is preferable to trust that person. Though when you're doing a natural translation, you'll want to translate this as should or should not. But when you're just looking at it literally, you can feel free to think of it as preferable. So it's preferable. It's best. 
to not trust that person. Ah, you shouldn't trust that person. 그 사람 안 믿는 게 나아요. 그 사람 안 믿는 것이 나아요. Okay, let's go on to the next one. So, like I said, this is the most common form that you're going to be using. And um, just also know you might see not that used by itself. So, we just used it by itself. You, you saw when I said 이것이 나아요, this is preferable. It doesn't have to be used in that construction with the action verb stem and everything. You can also just see it used as a regular verb to mean preferable or that's that's preferable. Um, like someone might just say, oh, yeah, 그게 나을 거예요. Like that, that would be better. That would be preferable. And there's no other like action verb or anything. It just means, yeah, that would be better. So it doesn't have to be used to mean should. So that's why you should really concentrate on the literal meaning because you might think of it, if you were to write down like, oh, this means should, then later you might see it used in a form that's not being used to mean should and you could be, it could be confusing. So just note that. Oh, I got a donation. Uh, I think I should note that the uh, lights on the board are broken. They flash purple for every donation and then they get stuck. Um, I'll have to turn them off manually. Let me see. Who did the, who did the donation? <laughs> and how much was it? Ah, Ibrahim. I should have known. Ibrahim. Thank you. You got the first donation of season three. Ibrahim. With that currency sign that I am not good at writing. Cool, thanks. First donation. All right, so let's go on to our next forum. Um, I have some more examples. All of these live stream outlines are gonna be posted on Patreon for even the $1 members. So if you're a Patreon, thank you, I really appreciate you. You get access to all of these when this is done. I have some more examples about this forum, but I'm gonna move on for sake of time because I don't wanna go over on today's lesson. So the first form we're gonna be learning is probably the, the next form we're gonna be learning is probably the most common form that you will see in a textbook or in a lesson if you search how to say should. And that is 면 좋다. <coughs> so you might have seen this form before. Like I said, it's super common. But because I said already should and should not do not exist in Korean, not literally anyway, think about what does this form mean? I mean, I'll tell you, but think about it. We have the 면 form which you should, you should already be familiar with how to conjugate this myun form. So we have myun, which we're just going to say it means if, because in all of these constructions, it does mean if. Myun chota. So this is the construction for how you can say should, another way that we're going to learn. Literally, so you probably have an idea of what it means. Okay, I'm going to tell you now. Literally, if you do something, it's good. So now, instead of having the meaning of preferable, like that would be best. That would be more preferable. That would be better. Instead of preferable, now we just have, oh, it would be good. I think it would be good if you went. I think it would be good if you didn't go. I think it would be good if you ate that. We have a new form that uses the same idea, even though it's different construction, uses myun, uses if form, the same idea. Some, if you do something, it would be good. If you do something, it's good. It's good if you do something. Yeah, it's good if you uh, learn how to drive. Should. This is what it means. So it, there is no should, but that's one way that you can convey the meaning of should. And they're all a little bit different, and we'll talk about how they're different. So first we have 면 좋다. Should as in, let me write this down. I think you should. So for those of you who kind of want an English approximation of this form, I think, I think you should, would probably be fairly close. So I think you should go. I think, I think you should do that. Yeah, I think you should, you know, buy a new computer. Whatever you want to say, I think you should is kind of, it's kind of like a soft way of suggesting something. Oh, another donation. All right, I'll do that before I continue so I don't stop in the middle. Uh, let's see who's this. I'm still a beginner and a little. Uh, but thank you for being so inspiring. Your lessons are very... Oh, this is flashing a lot. Okay, I think your lessons are very uplifting. Thank you. Amy Jane Foster. That's right, Amy Jane. All right, five. Thanks, Amy Jane. So we've got... Oh, yeah, I should set a, I should set a donation goal. 
Maybe I should get a new camera. Maybe I should get a new webcam. I think maybe I should do that. My donate, my donations. I'm thinking my donations are going to go toward getting a new webcam so we can get better quality video. What do you guys think? Is it already good enough? Do you think this is already like perfect quality? Do you think I should get a new camera? Let me know what you guys think. Uh, Ahimang, let me know what people think. People think maybe you should, maybe you could do like a vote if I should get a new camera or not, or if this camera is good. I just know cameras are expensive. Okay, so this form, let's do an example of it. Seabird. Bali. 청소하면 좋아요. 청소 meaning cleaning, like vacuuming or cleaning up. Not cleaning as in wiping, but cleaning as in organizing. 청소하면 좋아요. So literally we have the sentence, 집, house, 빨리, quickly, 청소하면, if, clean, house, quickly, 좋아요, 좋아요. It's good. So literally, it's good if you clean quickly the house. You should clean up the house right away. You should clean up the house quickly. You should quickly clean up the house. Come on, clean up. You should clean up right away. You should clean up right away. That's what the, li that's what the natural translation of this would be. Literally though, it's good if you clean the house quickly. Or as I suggested for my loose translation, I think you should clean the house right away, right? Literally though, if you do something, it would be good. So this is our first form for should. Now, this form is also okay to use just like the previous one we learned for not that to be preferable. Preferable though, however, that's when you're saying something is better than something else. If you're using not that, you might be wondering, well then when do I use not that and when do I use this chota form? They both seem to mean should, yes. Not that though more, is more of saying something is preferable to something else. Like whatever you're thinking, no, I think this, this would be best. That's when you use this. So, oh, you really should do that. You might think you shouldn't, but you should do that. And that's super common. Now this one is not that. This one is simply giving your opinion on something. This doesn't mean you think it's better than something else. You're not saying, oh, you're wrong. You should do this. You're just saying, I think this would be good. I think you should go. You're not saying, no, no, no. I think it would be better if you go. You're just saying, I think it would be good if you go. But they're similar. You know, if you misuse the not that form, the action verb stem with not that, instead of using this form, you're not gonna sound wrong. It'll have a different connotation, different nuance to it. It'll have a different nuance, but the meaning will overall be very similar. You'll still, you're still going to be conveying that you think someone should do something. So this one just means it would be good if you do something. So let's do one more example. See how many people we got. Oh, I got 140 people, I guess. Yeah, cool. Nice. Suave. So now we have suave is class. Let me just write this sentence set and then I'll look to see who it is. Oops. Okay, let me check to see who it is. And let me turn off the light too because the lights, like I said, they stay on. Okay. Um, Jeremiah. Oh, Jeremiah. I haven't seen your name in a while. Hey, Go Billy. My cousin Emily says hi. Jeremiah. Tell her hello from me as well. Sweet. Thank you, Jeremiah. Is she learning Korean too? Oh, dabs? Dabs? Okay, okay, fine. Ahimang is demanding that I do dabs to pay for her moderation. So, okay, we get a dab. I gotta do a small dab for Ibrahim first. Okay, now regular dabs for Amy, Jane, and Jeremiah. So, thank you, all of you. Okay, let's go on. This next example we have 수업에 집중하면 좋아요. Literally, 수업 class. A class, to class, so focus, to class. They say to when you're using the word focus. 집중하다 means to focus, and they use focus to. We would say focus on, so focus on class. If you focus on class, it's good. You should focus on class. So maybe you could say this, um, someone's just playing games and not studying, and you're like, hey, 수업에 집중하면 좋아요. You should focus on the class. 
So that's pretty much all it is. And that's all there is to it. There is no complicated rules to learn with this. Nothing else, no other special usage. It's just useful for saying, I think you should do something. It would be good if you did something, literally. It would be good or almost, you can also think of it, like I said, as being like an I think you should, I think someone should kind of form. Because like I said, it's kind of just saying something's good. You're not saying something's preferable to something else. You're just saying, no, 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 just in general, it's good. I think it would be good if you were to focus on your class in that way. Okay, let's go to the next form. Okay, oh yeah, this next one is actually very simple. See, if you, if you think about the concept of there being no should and no should not in Korean, then learning all of these different forms, I think becomes a lot simpler. You don't have to just memorize like this form means this, this form means should, this form means should not. Well, this one also means should not. You don't have to memorize that. You just look at these forms literally for what they mean. Myeon an jota. So what do you think this form would mean? You've never seen it before, maybe. So what does this mean? Something, something myeon, same thing before. Jota, same before, but now we have this an. An jota. Not good if, yes, this means, you're probably like, you're probably thinking like, Billy, I'm not dumb. I get it. It means you should not do something. And that's right. Yes, this literally is like, it would not be good. It's not good if you do something. So I think you should not. I think you shouldn't do that. So let's do a example. Oh, here we go. Pame. So at nighttime, pam night or nighttime, pame, ramen, ramen. Eh? What what are we gonna do at nighttime with ramen? We're going to eat it, of course. But pame ramen or mogumyan, anjoyo, anjoyo. Now we're not done with this sentence yet. I kind of want to further illustrate to you to really hammer it down that literally what these phrases mean. So first of all, pame at nighttime, ramen, ramen, mogumyeon, if you eat ramen at nighttime, it's not good. I think you should not eat ramen at nighttime. Literally, we have get we got this meaning, but naturally we can get, I don't think you should eat ramen at nighttime, right? So look at how it liter what it literally means, but because it literally means that, well, this sentence doesn't necessarily have to end with anjoyo, does it? Because literally we have pame ramen or mogumyeon. If you eat ramen at nighttime, well, what else could it be? It could be not good, but it could also be pega apayo. My stomach hurts. Pega apayo, right? Pame ramen or mogumyeon. Tamer mojayo. Tam tada meaning to sleep. Tamer mojada meaning you cannot sleep. If you eat ramen at night, you can't sleep. So this is the exact same literal me literal form you'd use in Korean just to say, if you do something, it's not good. So now you're just saying, well, if you eat ramen at night, it's not good. You're not saying should or should not. So make sure you get that. You are not literally saying, this form does not literally mean should or literally mean should not or anything like that. Just means it is not good. But because there is no should or should not in Korean, this is how you can say that. And again, the meaning, the feeling of hearing this jota or anjota form with myeon is kind of like you're expressing your opinion. You're saying like, I don't think so, or I think like that. You got it? I'm gonna move on to the next form. So some of you might be thinking like, wow, this isn't too difficult. I got it if it's your first time. And some of you might be thinking, Billy, this is so easy. Everyone knows this if you're, you know, if you're intermediate, but I promise if you're intermediate, I have some more intermediate ish stuff for you coming up. Actually, the intermediate form I'm going to show you today, although it's technically like an intermediate difficulty to learn, even the advanced, even a lot of advanced Korean speakers I know don't know how to use it. So in that way, you can think of it as like an advanced form. Okay, let's check the chat for a moment. It's at 2.30, nice, perfect on time. 
Can it be combined with ngo katta? Would it sound natural? Muku. Yes. Oh, mu muku, right? Muku. I'm pretty sure it's muku. You told me that. Yes, you can combine it with the thinking form because literally it's just, it's good. It's not good if you. So you can combine that also with the katta, go katta form. So you can say, kuroke hamyan. I'm not going to write this for time. Kuroke hamyan. Literally now, I think it would be good if you did that. So now you have more of a literal meaning of I think, whereas if you don't add the kata form, it still kind of has the feeling of I think, just not the literal meaning of I think. But yes, that is very commonly used as well. And once you know that these forms literally mean what they do, you can play around with them in Korean by adding other forms to them just because they're regular Korean. You don't have to learn them as a set grammar form. Like, oh, this always is like chota, like this, you can't do anything. No, no, they're just regular grammar. I mean, regular words in Korean put together. So more than a grammar form, these are simply combinations of verbs that you might see in Korean. Good question. Okay, next form we're going to be using is actually not a should form, but I want to go over it because Many people might think it is a should form, but it is not. So don't be fooled by this form. This does not mean should. Oh, got another donation. Let's see who it is. Okay. Oh, $10 donation. Another Amy Jane Foster. Oh, Amy Jane. Nice. Goes from five to 15. Awesome. Thank you. I'm going to be getting my, uh, getting a new camera in no time. Oh yeah, Ehimang, what's the result of the vote? Did people vote? Amy doting was, yeah, donations are never a bother. Oh, let me turn off this uh, light because it's broken. I gotta fix this, I gotta fix these lights. For some reason, they, um, they don't turn off. Oh, and I got a new, I got a new patron also. Violaine. Nice, thank you, Violaine. I, can, I just got a notice on my phone. Okay. Yes, three, no, two. Ah, that's, that's kind of close. Maybe we should do another poll again later. I don't think it's got enough participants for me to make a vote on that close. Okay, uh, Amy Jane, yes, sorry to bother you again. Oh, you're not bothering me. Um, I meant to say that I'm only still, still only beginning, but your lessons are inspiring. Thank you again for me in England. Keep well, Billy. Thank you, thank you. Yes, I appreciate it. Okay, so this form is not should, but we can look at it and try to see what it might mean. So, myun, if, now this ketta form, literally it's future tense, will be good. But in Korean, they use this kind of as like a would. Now that's not a huge distinction, but it means more like would be good if. So what do you think saying it would be good if you do something? Well, you might be thinking it means should like, oh, it would be good if you went to the store, meaning means you should go to the store. But now, that's not really how Koreans use it because in English too, if you were to say, ah, oh, it would be good if you went to the store. It's kind of like, it's a little bit awkward, I think. In Korean though, this has a very useful meaning to say hope or wish. Literally, it would be good. So this is used for not saying, you, saying someone should do something, for, but for expressing that you wish something happened. Literally by saying, it would be good if this happened, well, I'll give you some. I'll give you an example in just a second. Oh, I got another donation. Hey, none your business. I was right, none ya. Oops, none hyuk. A hyuk? Wrote your name wrong. None ya. Oh, five dollar. Awesome. Let's see what you wrote. Glad live streams are back. I've been slacking a lot lately, but hopefully I can start studying harder again. Looking forward to future live streams also. Yes, thank you, and welcome back, none your business. I'm glad they're back too. I missed them. I couldn't do them when I was in Korea. For obvious reasons, I don't have a place to do them in Korea. Okay, so this form means like hope or wish, as in literally, it would be good if something happened. So let me give you an example of how this is used. But this is not should. So I'm just, I'm only including it because it looks very similar to the should form, but it doesn't mean should. And whether it means hope or wish only depends on the context. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, people who are learning English Korean speakers who are learning English, they have a difficulty knowing when they should say hope or wish, but it's not the same going to Korean. You don't have to worry about it. Just pick hope or wish, whichever one sounds more natural to you. 
So a very basic example is you can say 비가 오면, literally if the rain comes, or how Korean people say to rain. So if it rains, 비가 오면, if, literally if it comes, the rain, if the rain comes, then you can say 좋겠어요. 좋겠어. 비가 오면 좋겠어요. It would be good if the rain came, literally. But you're not saying the, the rain should come. Right? That doesn't make any sense. The rain should come. The rain should not come. Like, no, what it means is liter literally it would be good, right? There is no should or should not, just it would be good. So this is how they would say, ah, it would be good if the rain came. I wish it would rain. I hope it'll rain, like that. One note, though, with this form, and I actually made a video about this so you can learn more about this in detail. You can use the present or the past tense of the verb stem that goes before myun when you're using this hope or wish form. Oops, I got another donation. Let's see who it is. And the lights are broken. I might have to buy new lights. I don't know. <laughs> they, were, they were really cheap when I got them, so maybe that's why they're broken. Oh, and there is. Hey! I see you all the time in the uh, Discord. There it is. Canadian. Your Canadian money is just as good here. Uh, celebrating season three. Also, I'm the new patron. Oh, nice. Thanks. Nice. Yeah, I, I know that when I went on vacation, well, kind of, not really vacation, but when I went to create a film, a bunch of videos, um, I wasn't able to do any live streams or do any special Patreon posts other than some updates. And uh, yeah, still a lot of you guys stuck around. I, I was like, really impressed. I was expecting everyone would leave my Patreon when I stopped doing live streams, but thank you guys. So you can say, 비가 오면 좋겠어요. It would be good if the, ra if the rain comes, present tense, or you can do it in past tense. Past tense stem. Oops, uh, I can fix it. Okay. <laughs> 비가 왔으면, 왔다, literally, past tense, the rain came. So literally you're saying, if the rain came, it would be good. Or if the rain comes, it will be good. Both of them are perfectly acceptable, neither is more common. But this is a small note for intermediate learners who have already learned this form. If you use past tense, it's slightly more emphatic. It has a stronger hope or stronger wish. So it shows that you're more strongly wishing for something to happen. That's it. That's the only difference. But it's very small and either of them is okay. So you can use this form to say you hope or you wish. But it looks very similar to the other 면 좋다 form. So um, just keep in mind though that this is not the same form. If you see it, don't get this confused. Because literally it's similar, but it's not, it doesn't have the same meaning in Korean. Okay, the next one we're going to be doing. Um, yes, okay. Now this now, now we're getting into some more fun territory. 면 되다. 되다. So what is 되다? Now, I'm, I like grammatical constructions that use 되다 because 되다 does not translate nicely into English. You know, you might, there's a lot of ways you can see it being used, like, Become is the most common. Like something became this, or I want to become a firefighter, you know. But 되다 by itself does not literally mean to become, quite. I'll tell you what it means in a second. Oh, we got another donation. Let's see. Rachel T. I pity the fool who doesn't donate. Rachel T. Thank you. Word alliteration. A bit car sick, but it's so worth it. Oh, I apologize. And are you getting car sick by watching this while driving? Are you driving right now and watching this live stream? That's pretty cool. We are in 2019. He'll fix it. I'll make sure of it. Um, I don't know. The lights. Uh, yeah, they, they worked totally fine before I went to Korea. And then when I came back from Korea, I tested them and then they don't, they don't work anymore. So I don't, I don't know. Um, okay. I mean, at least they still react, and it's not a big deal for me to turn them off. Okay, become. But it, here's, a, here's not the official definition, but think of this. We have a word in English, becoming, right? Becoming. Let me just check. The, let me make sure before I teach you something strange. Let me just check 
the definition of becoming. Flattering, um, handsome, elegant, tasteful. Okay, good. Right. It, it, this does not. This is not what the word means. It does not mean to be becoming. But think of it kind of like this because the meaning is similar. It's something good. Teda literally means to be acceptable. Like that's okay. That would be okay. That would be acceptable. That would be becoming. And I, the reason I put this in here is just as a reminder because it sounds similar to the Korean definition of to become. So if you think of this word as meaning like it's good, it's okay, you'll also get the meaning of it as well. So literally, if you do something, it would be acceptable. Hold on, let me just write this down really quick. Acceptable, okay, or it will work. It'll work. Like, that'll work. Oops, let's see the, who the donation's from. Gina. Gina. With a $5 donation. Awesome. Thank you, Gina. Oh, you didn't write a note. You didn't write a note. So I'll just do some dabs. Let's see. I got to do a dab for, uh, I think, Nanya, Emeryliz, Rachel, and Gina. There you go, four dabs. If you didn't want a dab, then you can donate it to one of the other people who donated. I, I think I remember one of the donators last stream didn't like me dabbing, <laughs> would purposely pay so that I wouldn't do, wouldn't do dabs, but they're not here right now. <laughs> okay, so literally you're saying it would be good, as in like it would be proper, it would be acceptable, it would be okay, it would work like that, in that sense. So it does not mean become here. And literally the teda, this does not mean become anyway. You, you've seen teda in other conjugations such as like hea teo, like you have to do it. In that situation too, it only means literally to be acceptable. So teda literally means to be acceptable or to work. It does not literally mean to become. There are other words that literally mean to transform or to become. Oh, another donation. I just put my hand down. Okay. Carol. Oh, Carol Lindner. I haven't seen that name in a while, although I haven't done a live stream in a while. So that's my fault. $11 donation. Hi, your lessons are very helpful helpful to us. Yes, thank you, Carol. I appreciate it a lot. This is great. I didn't expect to get a bunch of donations on season three. Usually it like takes a little, takes a few more episodes before people start donating. Okay, so yes, let me, sorry, let me try to finish this real quick. So the difference between myon teida, literally, it's acceptable. It's okay if you do something. This The difference is this is a little bit little bit stronger than chota. So if you're saying kamyan chuayo, like you should go, and you say kamyan teo, you should go, the kamyan teo would be slightly stronger, like you really should. Uh, we're going to talk about how it's different. I actually have an example of two, two sentences. I'll do this donation and then I'll, t I'll write down the two sentences. Melissa. Oh, awesome. $5 donation. I've only been learning Korean for a month, but I've learned so much from you. I especially love your Busan dialect video because it surprises others. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I really had a lot of fun making the Busan dialect video. And if you like my dialect videos, then stay tuned because I've got some more coming up that I'm going to be working on soon. Maybe a uh, Jeju dialect one or a Tegu dialect one or what dialect would you like to see? Let me know. I'll do more. I'll at least do like one or two of those a year. Okay, so let's do two examples. So um, before I give you an example of this, actually, let me just give you one example, but then I'll, I'll, I'll show you how it's different because learning this form is best when you know exactly how it differs, how it differs. It's best to learn this form, how it differs from the regular myon chota form. So we, we're going to do this. Sigum. Kamyan. So if you go now, Teo. So now we have the Teda conjugated as Teo. Or, Sigum Kamyan, Chuayo. Both of these in English can translate as should. And that's what trips people up, is because they're learning it as should and not learning it literally also for what it means. So literally we have Sigum Kamyan Chuayo. It's good if you go now. 
I think you should go now, right? I think I think it would be good if you went now. I think you should go. 지금 가면 돼요. It's acceptable. It would be okay if you went right now. It's acceptable if you go right now. It is. It would work if you go right now. The plans will work if you go right now. So what's the difference between these two forms? There is quite a bit of difference, although both of them can mean should. The what's what's the word I'm looking for? The um, the um, okay, I lost my train of thought. But the feeling, the nuance is different between these two forms. If you say toyo, what you're simply saying is, if you go now, it's good because, just because that's that's best. That's the best thing to do. That's best. I think it would be good if you went. I think. So you get these sorts of nuances when you say toyo, like 지금 가면 toyo. Ah, if you go now, it would be good because that's best. Because I think if you go now, it should be good. Just sort of that soft way of suggesting something that you think. It's just a feeling that you have. Eh, I think it would be good if you go because, you know, that's the best. You should do it. Whether that's kada or whatever you have. This is just an example. If you use tueda, however, if you go now, it will be acceptable. If you go now, it will be okay. This has a different feeling, although it also translates as should. You should go now. This tueo has the feeling of or else or there might be a problem or there might be a problem not a threat this is not a threat just like hey uh i think you should go now hey you really should go now so this is suggesting that only by doing this will things be acceptable will will everything be okay like okay you really you should go now you should go now whereas this is I think you should go now, like that. That's the feeling, and I can't, I try to think of a way to, con co to translate this into English, simpler, but it's more of a feeling difference between these two forms, because in English, both of them are, like I just said, should. I think you should go now. No, you should go now, or you should go now. This one's more like, uh, you should go now, because if you go now, it will work. It'll be acceptable. Which is like saying uh, there might, something might happen if you don't go right now, you know, or, or else, you know, there could be a problem. Uh, everything could get messed up. But if you go now, it'll be okay. That's what Peo is saying. So this is often used as a command. For, you'll hear people say this as a command, like, hey, oh, it's your turn. You should go right now. Quick, you know, if you, if you don't go right now, you're going to miss your turn in that sense. It's not a threat, but yeah, it's just like, hey, 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 if you go right now, it'll be okay. Toyo is just, oh, if you go now, you should go now. Yeah, it would be good. It would be great to go now. That's all it means. So it's just a feeling of nuance. If you don't know which one to use, use either one you want. You're not going to be wrong. It'll just give a different nuance. Oh, another donation. Oops, here we go. Sarah. Sarah. Sarah Krenia. I was thinking of uh, Sarah O'Connor. Okay, I'm sitting here on my work break watching this and there's nothing else I'd rather be doing right now. Your view videos are so, so helpful. Oh, thank you, Sarah, that's really nice. You're on your work break. That means you're gonna run out of work break soon, but it's okay. Like I said, I'm trying to keep these lessons um, under an hour, like an hour, hour and a half for the lessons. So hopefully, if you don't get to catch it all right now, you'll still get to see it afterward that that was the thing I, that was the problem with season two and season one is that i often went well over two and a half like two hours or two and a half hours sometimes and i felt bad because if you're trying to watch it later it's just this really overwhelmingly long video so okay i'll get back to the lesson okay so that's the difference between the two and now let's do um one more example of this one place that you might see this myon tada form is this expression this is just an expression you can learn this exactly as it's written. Hamyan tuenda. Now this tuenda is just the plain form. And I did a lesson talking about plain form before. It just means it is. So it's just a statement. Hamyan tuenda. Literally, it is acceptable if you do it. Well, this is the Korean military's motto. Um, in, in America, the military's motto, at least it used to be, or, you know, those flyers that would say, you can do it, you know, you can do it or just do it. 
whatever, you know, and they had like the women, the woman with the arm doing, we can do it or whatever, you know, kind of that type of expression. This doesn't mean you can do it, but just that style of expression. Well, in the Korean military, their style of expression they use for, you know, their kind of morale boosters expression is, hamyeon denda. Like, if you do it, it would be acceptable, or you really should do it. As in, your military, you know, you should do it, you should give it your all. Hamyeon denda. So you will just see this exact expression written on the walls. Uh, you might see this posted in message boards, and that's what people are referring to. It's just their military expression in Korean. So it is, and it is this form. Literally, you should do it. Sorry, actually, not literally. You should do it, but it's okay. It is. It would be. It would be okay if you do it. But if you don't, there might be some problems. <laughs> kind of like that. Okay, and the next form we're going to use is very similar to this. So hopefully you should be able to get this. So remember we did an jota. Well, now we also have myeon an deda. And this is literally, again, if you do it, it would not be acceptable. It's not okay. It's not acceptable. And this is, again, a very common way to give a command. If you want to tell someone don't do something, um, parents will give their kids commands using this. You can tell your kid, 그거 먹지 마, 먹지 마. Don't eat that. 그거 먹지 마. But parents might not want to just say, don't eat that. Don't eat that. They might, they might just want to say, hey, you shouldn't eat that. Uh, I wouldn't eat that if I was you. Like that. You know, we give kind of different, different commands that are not so direct as just saying don't or do it. Well, in Korean, it's the same. They also would give commands by saying you should not do something. So literally by saying you should not, well, it wouldn't be good. What they're actually giving is a command saying don't do something, but in a, light, a little more polite way. So let's look at an example of that. Um, if, you go to the, uh, if you go to the swimming pool, you might see, or you might hear someone say this. 뛰면, 뛰다 is to fly or to run. So, dida to run here. Diman, if you run, andeo. Diman andeo. Toki, diman andeo. The lifeguard might shout out, diman andeo. Literally, if you run, it's not okay. It's not okay to run. But what they're saying is, no running. No running. Like that. But in Korean, diman andeo, they wouldn't say, they wouldn't just say, dijimaseo. That's kind of like, you know, it's direct. Like, do not run. Do not do it. Whereas this is like, hey, 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 you shouldn't run, you shouldn't run. It's a little more polite. And then if they ignore this command, then the lifeguard might shout out, did you pass Like that, you know. But this would be the first polite way to give someone a command that you don't want them to do. So don't do something. 뛰면 안 돼요. 뛰면 안 됩니다. If you're speaking really polite. Or if you're just talking to your kid or, so, or you know, a close friend. 하면, 뭐 뛰면 안 돼. 안 돼. That's when you also hear the, um, you know, that expression, 안 돼. 안 돼, 안 돼요. You might have learned this on like a random learn Korean phrase, like 10,000 common Korean phrases blogs with like pictures of K-pop, like BTS photos and stuff. And then a bunch of expressions It would like say, 안 돼, 안 돼. And then like a two paragraph explanation of how to use it. Well, that, that's this word. That is the same word, 안 돼. Right? So maybe, maybe you just had like a your mind was just blown. You're like, wow, this is the same expression that you use when you say andre or andreo. Yes, it is. It's the exact same verb. Literally, it is not okay. It is not okay. It is not acceptable, which is how Koreans would say no, right? No, don't do that. It's not okay. Andre, don't touch me. Don't look at me. Andre, oh no, I can't believe it happened. You know, that kind of expression, andreo. It comes from this. And the opposite, of course, just being teo. Yeah, teo. Yeah, that's okay. Teo. No, andre. So that's the same expression. So now you know that it's the same thing. Um, you can also see something like 그거 먹으면 So if you eat that 안돼 그거 먹으면 안돼 You shouldn't eat that. Literally If you eat that, it's not okay. It's not acceptable if you eat that. So don't eat it. 아, 그거 먹으면 안 돼. It's not okay if you eat that. Hey, you shouldn't eat that. That's the boss's. That's mine. That's, you know, that's my friend's. Don't eat that cookie. 쿠키 먹으면 안 돼. You can't eat a cookie. You just brushed your teeth like that. 
Okay, let me take a quick... I'll probably throw away this eraser. I think this eraser's had its life. Let's, let's, let's retire this eraser because this is actually the same eraser I used before we finished the last season and it's been sitting around. So let's say goodbye to this eraser. Bye eraser. And let's get a brand new eraser. This is the exact same color, just brand new. There we go. I think the other one wasn't working very well. Uh, let's see, how are we on time? 2.55. All right, we are good. I'm going to look at the chat just for a moment, just for a minute, see how everything's going. Everything go doing okay? Vegeta Vipra asked, how long does this live stream? Normally, the live streams would go two hours to two and a half hours, but with season three, I'm trying to keep them under two hours. So if everything goes correct, goes well, we'll be done in like 30 minutes or so. And then I might answer some extra questions after, but I want the live stream actually to be done at like an hour and a half. Would, would be good. How is this different from the Ah Ya Teda? Rachel T asked. Oh yeah, it's a good question. Actually, I'm not going to be talking about that other form today, but if you already know that form, Ya something something Teda, this is a have to. Have to. And I could talk about this more detail if we actually do a lesson about it. But literally, it means only if you do something will it be okay. This ya form, which I would go, to, I'll go into detail about later, means only if you do something, only if it will be okay. It's acceptable only if you do something, literally, which is how we would say you have to do something. Kaya te. It's only acceptable if I go. I have to go. That's how, that's what it is. But it's it's the same te da. It's the same te da that you see everywhere, but different you, different form before. So it has a completely different translation in English. But if you know the literal meaning in Korean, you can see that a lot of these forms are the exact same. Like they're very similar. Ya te da and myon te da. Very similar in Korean. They're only different when you think of them in English. Like in English, you think should and have to are totally different. Like have to is a necessity. Should is just my thought. Well, in Korean, if you do something, it's okay, or only if you do something, it's okay, are very similar in Korean, but they're, they have different English meanings. One, if you say, if you do something, it's okay, that's like, yeah, you should. And the other one, only if you do something, it's okay, is like, well, you have to, right? That's the different meaning, but those different meanings only come about in English. And in Korean, they're very similar. So if you know the literal meaning of verbs that you see in grammar forms, it's much easier to understand when you then see different uses of those forms because you'll know the literal meaning of it. Okay, let's move on. Um, we are at our intermediate section. So we have finished our beginning forms. We covered natta first. Let's just do a quick summary of what we covered and then we're gonna go on to our intermediate. We covered natta, we covered myon jota and an jota. We covered myon choketa Sorry, my writing's messy. I'm just doing this quickly. We also covered myon teda and myon an teda, right? So that's we did one, two, three, four major forms. Six, if we include the an variations of that. That's the end of our beginning stuff. Now let's go on to some more intermediate concepts. Okay, this form. I do not recommend learning this if you were a beginner. This is a intermediate form. However, as I said briefly, I know lots of people who are advanced speakers who do not know how to use this form and don't use it, although they can understand it because it's actually quite advanced. So easy to make, but you have to be able to speak Korean to be able to use it. So I would not recommend learning this if you're a beginner, just kind of you can you can follow along if you'd like, but do not expect to learn this. And I really would not recommend spending your time on this form if you're still a beginner. Let me just get some caffeine first. I got another notice. Oh, and Amy Jane Foster just became a patron too. Thank you, both of you, for Ameriliz and uh, Amy Jane. Nice, nice. Okay. So these are the two forms we're going to be using, but let's go with this one first. G. So you take the action verb stem and you attach G. So this is, you know, this shouldn't be too hard because we've worked with this before. 
then you need to conjugate this verb, which is already in the past tense. Kuretta. Now you'll have to conjugate this, so you might say, Kureso yo, or whatever you want to say. You'll have to conjugate this form. Maybe you want to talk about the past tense. You'll say, Kuresu koeyo. You know, it was that way. That's up to you how you want to conjugate it, but the base is past tense of this verb. So you have kureta. So let's just take hada. Hada becomes haji kureso. Haji kureso yo. So that's just the basic way of conjugating this form. Now, this form also means should, but it's not just should. This is should have. Now, there's other ways to say should have in Korean that are more direct and more literal. Like, you should have done that before he had done that other thing that he had done. Is You know, there's other literal ways that you can use should have that are less common. This is a very, actually, I shouldn't say just less common that are more formal. This is a informal way to say should have. So by informal, I mean not formal, not super polite. It's not rude. It's not rude, but it's not polite. So you would not want to say this to your boss. You wouldn't want to say this with um, people that you're not very close with uh, in general situations, giving a speech, you know, meeting strangers. But for any friend, for anyone you know, even if they're a little older than you, someone you're kind of close with that you could speak informally with, you know, if you're, the you form itself is also informal, technically. So if you're using just regular yo form with someone, you're, no, you're safe to use this form. Should have, as in, ah, oh, I should have looked. Oh, I should have, I knew I should have bought a lottery ticket. Oh, I should have talked with him. I, oh, I should have asked. Like that, that sort of should have informal version. And the thing you have to know about this though is that this form can only be used with second person. What, what I mean is, to make it easier, just you. This is only used with you. So this is not to say I should have. You can only use this form to say you should have. You should have. Ah, oh, you should have gone together to the party with us. You should have gone um, hiking with us. Ah, oh, you should have told me earlier that I wouldn't have bought my computer. Ah, oh, you should have you should have ordered more food. We ate it all already, right? That kind of expression, should have. Very natural, very informal. Only second person. So you, you should have. So let's do an example. And again, this is intermediate, but even advanced people have difficulty with this. So if you're seeing this for your first time and you're a beginner, don't worry about it. But I mean, if you're a beginner, I'm not going to stop you from writing it down. And it's not going to hurt you to be exposed to it at all. Just, I would not stress about it. If you feel like, oh, this is too hard, I can't get it. Well, duh, it's, it's, it's a hard grammar concept. So let's just do something simple. Katsi. Let's make sure stream's going okay. Everything's doing good. Okay, katsi. Kazi. so we just have kada to go. Katsi, kazi. Katsi, kazi goresso. Katsi. Now, katsi literally means together, is also how Korean people just say with us or with me. So this is the this is the natural translation of together in Korean. Katsi. Katsi meaning together. So you should have gone together, or you can think of this as I should have gone together with me. Together with me. Together with us. You don't necessarily have to say narang with me or urirang with us. You don't have to say that. It's assumed. Unless you want to be specific, like, oh, it should have been with me, not with that guy. 나랑 같이 가지고 그랬어. 나랑. With me. You know, that guy, you sh he was a loser. Ha ha. 나랑 같이 가지고 그랬어. Ha ha. Although, actually, I'm a loser too. So, you don't have to say with me or with us. It's assumed that it, it's in that meaning of 같이 if you don't say it. But if you do say it, 나랑 or 우리랑 우리하고 you know, any sort of with form. If you do say it, it just makes it more clear. It makes it 
em more emphatic, if you want to emphasize like, no, with me or no, with us instead of that group, then you can add it, but it's not required. So that's a, that's just an off note about katsi. Um, let's make sure we're okay on time. All right. So katsi katsi kureso, you, remember this form is only with you. You should have gone with us. You should have gone with me. Ah, 같이 가지 그랬어. Why did you stay at home? 왜 집에만 있었어? 왜안 갔어? Why didn't you go? Why were you just only at home? 같이 가지 그랬어. You should have gone together. It would have been fun. There's another form you can say for it would have been fun, but we're not going to talk about today. But just should, we're just doing this should have form here. So you should have come. Let's do another verb. Sorry, another example. Um, oh yeah, let's do this. 더 일찍. So 일찍 meaning early. Tall just meaning more. Together, tall with an adverb just means earlier. So here it's earlier. Tall ilchik malhada. So we're gonna have mal to talk or to say. Malhaji kureso. Tall ilchik malhaji kureso. Tall ilchik malhaji kureso. Literally, you should have, sorry, not literally, but the meaning, you should have said that or talked, you should literally talk, you should have spoken earlier. You should have said that earlier. Like, hey, you told me that there's a, what, if I went to the party, I would have gotten to meet uh, Cindy. I would have gone too. I would have gone too. Ah, oh, it's too bad. I wanted to see her. You know, like that kind of informal way of using it. You should have told me sooner. You, not I should have said it. So if I say 같이 가지 그랬어, that doesn't mean I should have gone together. It means you. So think of this G as meaning just you. So that exclusively is for the you usage when you're using it in this form. And let's do one more. Like I said, this form is super common, but also super not used by Korean learners. Just I think it's a little bit advanced, despite not being difficult to put together. 더 시키지. So 시키다 is has a bunch of meanings, but here it also means to order for like to order food for delivery. If you're ordering food for delivery, they use 시키다. So 더 more. 더 시키지. 그랬어요. 거봐 벌써 다 먹었잖아. Look, we already ate it all. 더 시키지 그랬어요. You should have ordered more. 더 시키지 그랬어요. 더 시키지 그랬어요. You should have ordered more food. Uh, it's not. It's not a mean form. Now this isn't like a way that you can, um, you know, chastise someone for not doing something or tell, oh, you should have done something. It's just simply like you should have ordered more food. It, come on. It's it's a friendly, informal sounding ending. You should have done something. You should have ordered more food. 더 시키지 그랬어요. Hey, come on, you didn't order enough food. You should have ordered more food. That kind of feeling. Okay, let's go to the next form. So now you've got it. Just remember that this is only for you. So then you might be thinking, action, oops. How can I say I? Well, let's learn that. Verb stem. So you got the verb stem and you attach ul if it ends in a consonant, obviously, as this is the same way the other ones work, or just a lil if it ends in a vowel. And then you attach kol kuresso or kuretta. You'll do the same thing here, kuretta. So past tense again. However, we'll talk about this in a second. I'm going to put this in parentheses. So this is, first of all, I should say, this is not the same call ending that you might see in other ways. Like you might have a, see a sentence that ends with call or a sentence that ends in call yo. There are three, I can think of the off the top of my head, three different grammar forms in Korean that use call in them. This is not the other two you're thinking about. This is not call like shorten. It's not the call at the end of the verb when you're just, when you're uh, saying contradictory, contradictory evidence to someone else, like when you're contract, Contradicting someone else. Sorry, I can't speak. This is not that form. This is a separate form. So just learn this separately. So you get a verb. So example, hada would become ha after the verb stem. It ends in a uh, vowel, so you attach lil. Halkol, kureso yo or kureso. So 
If it's a consonant, it'll be ul. So mokda to eat will become mogul, kol, kristo. So that's how you use it. This one is only for first person. By that, I mean I. So this is if you want to say I. This is not how you would say you should have done something for the most part. We'll talk about that in a second. So this is how you say I. Now, one thing you should note is I put parentheses around kureta. That's because kureta is actually optional. You don't have to use this verb at all. You can end the sentence after kol. It's assumed that you're saying kureta. So you can just say, instead of hal kol kureso, like we just wrote, you can just say hal kol. Ah, hal kol. I should have done it. I should have gone too. You don't have to say the kureta form. And I think a lot of times they don't. So I'll say optional with preference to not use it. But it's there normally. It is there. Just they assume that you mean that. So let's do an example. Okay. Let's do, I already said karkor, so I'm not going to do that. Hey. Muroboji. So we have muroboda to ask. Muroboji. Markor. Now, this is, I, I'm giving you an example that actually has two concepts. So if you were to say don't do something, normally, you know, you'd use the chi marda form. And we did this in a previous live stream. The base form of saying do not do something is ji ma da. And this conjugates as ji ma or ji ma yo or ji ma se yo, right? Like haji ma se yo, kaji ma, kaji ma se yo, haji ma se yo, haji ma. This originally comes from ma da. It just conjugates as ma se yo or ma, depending on how you want to conjugate it. So this is the same thing. Muro boji ma. Here, when you're using this form, the kol kureta form, um, or even the um, g form, the form you use for do not do something, like I wish you didn't do something, I wish I didn't do something, is ji mal. So, before I go, before I go on any further, muroboji mal kol. I should not have asked. I should not have asked. Muroboji mal kol. Like maybe I ask someone how old they are and then they get really angry and they start like exploding and running away and blowing up everything. Then I say, ah, I shouldn't have asked their age, you know. Ah, But if you wanted to say you should not have asked, same thing. And now we're going to have mal. Muroboji malji. Kuresso. This is why it's kind of an intermediate form because it does have some, you have to remember how these things work together, but it's kind of also an advanced form in that you have to be able to speak Korean to even be able to enjoy using this form or it's going to be a pain to use it. But at least you could recognize it if you're not at that level yet. So, I should not have asked that. You should not have asked that because it has the G. So pay attention to it, whether it has the kol, I, or T, you. Like, I can't think of an easy way to remember those, but however you want to remember them. So, is optional. So, if you're using should not have, literally what you're saying, should not do not something. Well, should not do something. So, because would be do not ask. So, you're saying should not do something. So that's kind of, it doesn't work as, it doesn't use the anta, you might think it might use the ant, this negative form. It doesn't use that. It doesn't use an before the verb, but it'll just use ji mae ji so like that. Or buro ji mae So let's do one more example though. I know that by showing negatives, it kind of makes the form seem a little bit more complicated, but I promise that ji mae da form is actually the standard ending that you use for making anything negative when you're talking about, unless you're talking about like a statement, like a direct statement, like I do not do that, I did not do that. For any other grammar form, they will use ji mal da 
as the sort of don't to mean do, do not for a lot of those forms. So it's kind of a standard thing. Um, let's do another one. Let's say, actually, let me ask you guys, how would you say I should have woken up, I should have gotten up, wait, woken up, whatever. Let's use ironada. I should have woken up to wake up earlier. I should have woken up earlier. How would you say this? I want you guys to try this. We're still a little okay on time. So I'm going to let you guys do this. <clears throat> I should have woken up earlier. How would you say this? The bottom words are slightly cut off. Oh, I apologize. I didn't see how far they were cut off. Uh, maybe down to here. Okay, yeah, that would be toward the very bottom. I apologize. Hopefully you'll be able to read. Uh, Amerilis, you're too fast. <clears throat> Vigera Vipra is correct, but that would be you. So if you wanted to say, I should have woken up earlier, then it would be with ko. And if it's you, then you'd use ji. Yeah, I think you guys have got it. <laughs> you guys are fast. Okay. I'm glad that you guys are able to put it together too. Okay, so yes. So let me write down, let me write down the answer. Oh, that's the other thing I'm gonna do for uh, season three is that when we give quizzes to you guys, I will also write down a correct answer instead of just checking the chat. So, to ilchik. Write this a little better. To ilchik. Iro nae. And then optionally, although less common, including kuretta, so kuretsoyo. To ilchik ironal, oh, sorry. To ilchik ironal gol kuretsoyo. I should have woken up more early, earlier. To ilchik ironal gol. Ah, to ilchik ironal gol. I woke up so late, I missed my class. Uh, I missed my live stream. Ah, oh, oh, I really regret it. I should have, I should have woken up earlier. If we wanted to change this to you should have, then all you have to do is do this. But then this is no longer optional. <clears throat> so just know that when you use G, you have to use kuresoyo. <clears throat> Always. G, kuresoyo. But kol, you don't have to use it. It's not required. Oh, you should have woken up earlier. You missed class. You woke up so late. You should have woken up earlier. Okay, now let's do one more. I said that everything goes in order from beginning to intermediate to advanced. So now let's do an advanced note. So if you've been following along and you feel like pretty good about these two forms, you think like, okay, I got it. You know, maybe not a master, but maybe you think, you know, I got it. If I, if I saw it, I would know what it meant. I could probably put it in my own sentence. Then follow along with me, my friend. We are going on a slight uh, a detour to an advanced concept for just a moment. This core form I said is only used with first person, in which case this is optional. Well, you might sometimes see kor used with the second person too. I didn't lie to you though. If you're using it in first person, this is optional. If you're using this in the second person to say you, it is not optional. So that's why I said anytime you see the you, anytime it's being used to mean you, it has to go together with kuretta. Now this, I know what you might be thinking. You might be thinking, so then I should just learn kor kuretta and use it in both cases and only always use kuretta. No, this is not so common. It's not so common that you'll see this core form used with the second person. It's less common. And sometimes, sometimes, depending on how it's used, it can even sound a little bit awkward. Not wrong. It's okay, but less common. So it's not as good to use this to mean second person, but you might see it. So you should be aware if a Korean uses it, they're not misusing it. And if you hear it, don't think, oh, they mean me. They mean I should have gone. No, depending on the context, this can also mean you, but then it'll always be used with kureta, conjugated. You will not see, if you just see kol at the end, it means me, always. 
if you see kor kureta could be in first or second person depending on the context. So we could have something like this. Kachi kar kor. This only means I should have gone together. Ah, kachi. Let's, let's actually do it. Nado, let's make this easier. Nado kar kor. 100% has to mean me, right? Nado, me too. Nado kar kor. I should have gone. And there's no kureta. But now let's do. You can't just do This is less common than saying is more common by far. But you might sometimes see kor used in context with kor. It will always be clear if it's you. They will say something like you or in the context, you'll easily be able to know that they're not talking about themselves. But I don't recommend using it. Just, I really, I really do not recommend using it. In fact, I'll say that. It's not like, I'm not saying avoid it until you feel comfortable. I'm saying do not use this, but you might hear Koreans sometime use it and don't be alarmed if you see it that way. Just know that that's how it's used. Okay, so that was our journey into the advanced territory. And it is 321, we've been live streaming for an hour and a half. And we are done with today's lesson. How is that? Whew. So my goal was to keep every lesson an hour and a half minimum to two hours maximum. Um, and we are done with today's lesson. So if you are watching today's lesson from a, uh, re from a review, like you're watching, it's already uploaded and li um, not live anymore, then you can stop here. From now, I will do a few minutes of questions from you guys. Thank you everyone for coming. I'm glad we actually got through this. I'm surprised. I would like to keep every live stream, like I said, around an hour and a half, even maybe even a little shorter, because I don't want it to be such a big burden to have to rewatch the previous live streams. Whew. Okay. Again. Oh yeah. Before I, before I do that, um, join our Discord. Join the Discord. There's a link in the chat. There should be. Uh, Ehiman, could you or one of you moderators, could you post another link to the Discord? The Discord. Despite there being no live streams for the past three or four months, the Discord has still been fairly active, but you can go there, practice Korean anytime. You can chat with me. I'm in there every day. Um, you can ask questions about Korean. You can post your own resources, post Korean media, maybe your favorite K-pop music, whatever, and just talk with other learners. Uh, there's also a voice channel, which sometimes is used, and it's completely free. You also get updates about the live stream. If you want to get the live stream outlines, this outline I have here, with which has more sentences than I covered today. It just depends on time and what I feel is going well. This outline will be available for free, not for free, I take that back, for $1. <laughs> so everyone who, who is a $1 or more Patreon supporter gets access to this. And I'll post this today's live stream within the hour. You'll see it up there really soon. Um, and yeah, thank you for coming. So if you have any questions about Korean, feel free to ask them now. I'll do a few minutes of live questions and then we'll finish the stream. LOL. He always says, please post after I've already posted it. Okay, smarty pants. Join the link. Yes, it's completely free. There's also a live stream channel in the Discord where people practice the forms that they learn during the live stream. So if you'd like to do that, you're more than welcome. That's a really good idea. <laughs> like the video. Like it now. How do you say stay? Manda Mac, what do you mean stay? In what in what situation? I'll tell you. Because there's a few different ways you could say it depending on what, what it is that you mean. Thanks, Billy. I'm very smart to you. Do you have any webtoon rec recommendations? Um, I haven't read too many webtoons. I did get into one called Dice, but I only read the first few episodes and then I got busy in doing, at that time I was working on my third book, I think, so I stopped reading it. But it was pretty fun. 99 cent donation. Yes, the $1 donations on Patreon get access to every live stream from every single, well, every single live stream, the, the outlines are up there. This is not a question, but I'm glad you're back. Although this is too difficult for me, I enjoy listening. Yeah, I, I apologize that I know that the end part especially are, is going to be a very small percentage of learners who are at the high intermediate level to be able to use it. But I felt it's important that you should know. This is my first time here and I missed the whole hour. It's okay, this will be available for live review. 
within usually about an hour or two after the live stream finishes, YouTube makes it available to watch the whole thing. Yeah, and since this live stream was only, the teaching portion of this live stream was only an hour 20, an hour and 20 minutes. So you should be able to rewatch it again instead of over two hours as they normally would. And I'm only gonna keep live streaming for another five minutes or so and then I should probably get going. It's good to hear about and become a little familiar with things, even if you don't understand. Yeah, at least if you can recognize it. Ah, Vieta Vipra. Um, I think maybe you're trying to say you should not have stopped or you should have continued a lot. Not momchuda, but uh, continue. Keso kada. Keso kada is to continue going, to keep going. So if you were to say, Keso kada would mean to continue. Or you could just say, To hada to do more. So if you wanted to say, I think you should do more, you should have done more, you should have taught more, you can say, Chokum to haji. Oh, you should have done a little more. Sorry, to be to teach. You should have taught a little more. So you can say it kind of like that. Oh yes, and uh hey Himan, can you do another vote for if I should do a new camera or not? Because I only got five responses. And I don't think I want to go off of a five responses. I'd hope to get at least like 10 or so, so I can know if I should actually put the money toward a camera. Um, I already have a good camera for my videos. This would not be a camera for videos. This would just be a camera for the one you're seeing right now. Should I do a better live stream camera or is this perfectly fine? In which case, I'll just save my money and use it toward other things. Cause I, I spend a lot of money on equipment and making videos. <laughs> just, just this month I spent uh, $2,300 on new video equipment for YouTube. Uh, I wish I could say that it's their toys and I'm having a lot of fun with them, but they're really just YouTube stuff. Like I got a, a focuser because my camera wouldn't get in focus sometimes. I bought a new fo a monitor so I can see if it's in focus more easily. Um, and I got some new lights. You're actually seeing them right now. I mean, you're not because I'm in the middle of a Korean street. You're not seeing my new lights right now. Never mind. Uh, let's see the chat here. You add mada whenever it happens every time. <clears throat> I studied intermediate Korean at KHU in Seoul until June. I'm looking for ways to keep improving. Oh yes, definitely join the Discord. We there are even some native Koreans in there. Yes, which is pretty fun. More erasers. Fluffy suga cookies. Kamara and Joyo. The camera's good. Yeah. A bigger board. The problem with a bigger board <clears throat> is I'm still gonna be standing here. So if I get a bigger board that goes out to here not only will you lose the background, but you'll also get no extra board because I'm still gonna be standing right here. So that's the problem. If I wanted a bigger board, what I could do is simply um, get a really big board and stand farther back. Like I would stand way back here and I would have a big board and then I'd write and you wouldn't be able to see because it would be so small. But that's a possibility if I just get a gigantic whiteboard and get rid of the backgrounds entirely so that we don't do any like special locations. But yeah, if people want that, I could do that. Buy some ice cream instead. <laughs> In order of urgency, least to most. Oh yeah, Ren, Ren, Renzin, that's a good way to, uh, to look at it. Yeah, you can think of it like that. It's not so much urgency, but if you understand them, you can think of it that way. As long as you understand the literal meaning, yeah. Still requesting KiCat. Okay. All right. Hopefully KiCat's uh, green scarf doesn't get messed up here. Oh no, KiCat's green scarf. <laughs> okay. Yes, yeah, KiCat here. KiCat, say hi. Okay. We go back in the closet, KiCat. Oh, Amanda Mac, like, please stay here. Don't move. Yeah, you can use ita for that. Yeah, people do yogi cho miso, yogi cho miso yo. Stay here, to be here, literally. Um, if you want to say, like, stay at a location, like, like, stay at a hotel, they don't use ita for that. 
momurda, which is a contraction of a longer verb, but you don't really need momurda. But momurda is like to stay at a hotel, to stay at a location, like a building. But if you just want to say like stay here, you can just use itta, literally to exist. So exist here, be here, kind of like that. So yeah, quite simple. Oh yeah, I got more votes. Okay, yes, five votes, NAS 17. Okay, I guess that solves it for now. So for the time being, I'm not going to be upgrading to a new camera. I'll be keeping this one. Uh, hopefully you hopefully you're, you like the new quality of the stream. We have some new things for the season. Um, that clause in Korea, I'm not sure what you mean. This whole time I thought he was actually outside. Of course I am. This is a Korean street. I actually, uh, I actually took this picture when I was in Korea. This is my picture that I took. Well, I did the, I did a collaboration video with a street photographer named Noe, Noeels. Well, that's his handle anyway, his username, Noeels. And uh, yeah, he was really nice and he helped me take some photos. So we walked around uh, Seoul, the old streets, the old alleyways of Seoul and uh, from like the 60s or 50s. And this is a picture that I took. <clears throat> you can't really see it too well because I'm blocking it with the board, but he, I thought it was really cool and he really liked it too. Yeah, I could, I could show you. i show you a little more. This, the board's gonna leave here, but. But, um, does that look nice? Or does that look nice? See, look at this beautiful picture. I'm just gonna walk down the street. Kinda like disappearing here. <laughs> okay. All right, everyone. So thank you then for coming. Um, we are actually, I'm actually surprised to be finishing on time. So thank you again, again, um, my hands. Yeah, that's, um, <clears throat> oh, Tony, I don't feel so good. I don't feel so good, Tony. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I think you should invest in a lav mic. Um, I actually down, I actually had a lav mic and I went back because the lav mic kept me on a, I felt like I was anchored and uh, I could do like a wireless, but if you know a real, if there's like a really good wireless lav mic that works with the computer that you know of, I'd be open to that. But I, I originally had a wired, wired mic and I changed it because I felt like I was tethered to the webcam and I couldn't really move around freely. And sometimes it would get pulled and other times it was like getting tangled. So I got rid of it and switched to a regular microphone. But if you know an upgrade, if there's like a specific item that you know of, send it to me in Discord. I'll take a look. I am totally willing to do that. Yeah, if I speak this way, it sounds good. But I know if I talk around this way, then it doesn't sound as good because it's a directional microphone. Billy 선생님 최고입니다. Full, full fortune. Thank you, full fortune. Namu Mom's Restaurant. Okay, so thank you everyone for coming. I will see you again next time. And uh, please join the Discord. I am there every day. And remember to check the Patreon for the free, well not free, but check the Patreon if you're a member for the live stream outlines. So I'll see you guys again next time. Kuram, Tom. Oh yeah, let me give one more thank you to the don donators. Ibrahim, Amy June, Jeremiah, Nanya Business, Ameriliz, Rachel T, Gina, Carol, Melissa, and Sarah. Thank you guys. See you guys again next time. Kuram, tame toba.